Yeah, so the uh, off the indicator, um, you said the indication, your question was, is the indication different at 35 versus 45? Yeah. Uh, it's so far down on the gauge that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't tell a difference. Right, right. Um, to be honest, like, I was thinking about it as it was happening, like, to get an airspeed indicator that's, like, accurate from, like, a science standpoint yeah. of accuracy down at, like, it's hard to find something that'll go that low. It's not, this is plane it? is not designed to fly that speed. <laughs> it's like ultralight shit. Right? Yes, it is. Um, so I bring it all the way up, and each time it would drop a wing at the very last bit, but it was not dramatic. You know, we're talking like 15, 20 degrees roll okay. off, like not totally like part 23 certifiable stuff. Like so, not, so, so basically what you're saying is that handling now versus uh, flight six, that there's a huge difference both, both in actual uh, stall departure and uh, handling uh, elevator aileron kind of thing. So, so compared to flight six, yeah. number one, uh, the airspeed is obviously much lower. Well, it's probably the same airspeed, but the indication is lower. Sorry. Indicated yeah. airspeed is much yeah. lower. Number two, the, um, there was never a dead band, uh -huh. right? And I was way further back on the stick, but still had positive control in the elevator. Nice. Which is cool. But you didn't bottom out. I didn't bottom out, but I was further back. Yes. Just based on, you know, mm -hmm. what I Sure. Yep. The, um, when it dropped the wing, both times, uh, it went left a couple times and it went right just once. Yeah. Right. It might be the other way around, but it was real slow roll off, no big deal. I had plenty of time to get the stick forward and recover. Nice, awesome. nice. It's dramatic from 35 to 45 how much the descent rate goes up. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you were, you noticed, but the first stall at 45 took the, almost a thousand feet to get configured and then do the stall. Mm -hmm. At 35, I got them all done before I'd kill a thousand feet. Wow. All three of them. Um, so then I did the flaps up stalls. The um, flaps up, it was, it was the most pro rotation I felt. It tried to snap on me twice. And it was, both times was when I was on the trailing cone, uh, which shouldn't make a difference. Right. But both times I was on the trailing cone. And it was like, because uh, I was counting off the speeds and then you said 55 and I was like, no, nah, it was like 50. I remember, I remember you yeah, know, yeah, the yeah. but. The point was like I didn't make the last call because I was like trying to keep it from rolling over on its back. So the departure is way more aggressive flaps up. Obviously. The, the, my, the other side is like at that point I had done 10 stalls, yeah. 12 stalls that were so benign it was like yes. that's so benign. So maybe I was just getting sloppy, right? No, I think, you, I think you're correct, because what happens is when the flaps comes down, you, your, your attitude sure. of the aircraft changes, right? Sure. So, so, you, so when, when, when the flaps are down, you're loading, yeah, you're loading this portion. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you're loading both portions, but it, it flies with a different angle of attack, right? So when, right. You fly, when you fly flaps up, the whole wing goes up another, I would say, five degrees. Pushing the envelope of the whole wing, right? As opposed to just the inward side. Exactly, exactly. So I, th I, th I would say that's pretty normal. It's just something to uh, people, you know, look for. Uh, but that was also the reason that I added a little bit more VGs out here. Sure. In case of tip stall, you know. Well, and that's the, the monster, right? That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, it was uh, it was disconcerting. It was probably the most nerve wracking of the whole flight where those two stalls were trying to get this thing. Um, so notes, um, idle on the way out was at a thousand and on the way back it was at 1200. So I don't know, I was like dragging the brakes to try to like, uh, so I don't know what happened there. To that point, uh, every time I pulled the gear up, I think it was right at the end of the travel, the whole, all three levers went. <laughs> I don't know if they just moved forward and stopped or pull back and stop, but I think the gear is running into the cables, which may be what's holding it off the idle stop. talked about peak CHT 410 degrees mm -hmm. on climb out. And number four, which is surprising. So it, it peaked 
um, like get first power reduction at 407, like just as I was starting to turn, I was like, ah, shit, we're back to these cooling issues. Par, uh, prop back to 2700, you know, full, like got the nose down, let it accelerate a little bit, and then it started to come off and it was almost down to 400. And then uh, he was making all that racket and pissed off, and so uh, I was just gonna leave it. It'll it won't go too far. Um, so I leaned because uh, it was making so much noise. I'm messing with the mixture, and then uh, then the CHTs went back up, and that's when I saw 410. So you know, typically peak CHT is like there. Yeah. You can see peak CHT out there was again an indicator that um, I was unhappy with the motor. We mentioned the um, the gap seal tape. That could have been what I heard. It was more of a hear than a felt. That could be it. But it was like a slap. While that was happening, I was like, okay, is that the hose coming off the bottom of the airplane? Or is it the, um, the engine, is it like, I, I was like, felt like the exhaust manifold was like hanging and banging into shit, right? So something worth looking into. Huh, interesting. Uh, I mentioned on the radio that the uh, GPS and the static altitudes were way off. I had put in the wrong mm -hmm. uh, barometer setting, so that's on me. Um, we covered the stalls. If you look at the uh, clover leaf, so you're comparing um, these two air speeds. So clean, no change. 35 flaps, it's like two knots pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's about just, just maybe a little bit less, but I wrote down two knots at 45. So if there was a flap or a static position error before, it's gone. Um, uh, that's good. That's good news. I'm confident that uh, going forward we can believe the the cone. Yep. Uh, so that's good. That's a bunch good. of messing around, but yeah, got some data out of oh, that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, any other stuff? Yeah, you mentioned the landing was hot. Yep. I so I I made I told you I was done. I made a couple calls and I didn't hear you. So I said, okay, I'm going over. No, to No, I didn't know. I didn't hear you switching to a tower. I made like four calls like, hey man, all right, I'm coming down. Like, okay, I'm done with stuff. I'm mm -hmm. heading back. All right, I'm gonna switch frequencies. I'm gonna switch frequencies. No, okay. didn't hear anything at okay. all. I uh, saw you on the map. It's like, is he going into? Where is, where's he going? What's yeah, he doing? Yeah, so this looks like he's, uh, you know, on, on the left base or right base. It's like, and I called really? you. Yeah, and nothing. Okay, he must have switched. Huh. So I switched and, and then I heard you were, uh, yeah, you were on, so, you're on, so I told the tower line. you were going to be down there, and they said they hadn't heard from me. I was like, well, I'll just do a low pass, and that way you see me, and then you can see the cone. Maybe yeah, there's yeah, something we learned from yeah, that. Yeah. So I did that. Um, descended with gear out all the way from altitude, and then did the pattern with gear out. Okay. Came in, and uh, yeah, 110 on final is fast. Bear in mind now that the indication is different from yeah. what you're used to. So it's now it's probably... Um, if I was going to guess, I would say 90, 95 would have felt like what I would have expected before. So... Um, but I was like, well, you know, we said 100, like, yeah. come on, man, let's do this. So uh, that, that was fast. It, it looked fast. And I got down and like, I'm touching the brakes and it's like, Ibber, Ibber. Like, yes, it come on, come on, like, come on. It's like this. Because <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking about going off the runway. Right, right. right. Um, and then shut down, all that stuff is normal. Anything else from your side? No, no, it looks good. Uh, takeoff was good, Cone was centered. Uh, when you came in for the for the uh, test run with the cone, uh, yeah. it, it was a little low, and and then you pulled up a little bit, and then did it, it drag at all on the? No, no, but it was like this far off, right? And it was right at the end of the run. Did it look like it was pretty well centered? It was well centered. It, it was just um, probably a little bit too far out, you know. But it's it, a it's a long rope. You're it, saying that's that's the thing. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But it, it, landing was fine. You know, so everything was. Fine. Did it look like it ever hit the dirt when no, I landed? No. Uh, yeah, I was looking at all the stuff on the ground. I was like, ah, I don't think there's anything else we can hit. I need to get down. Right. <laughs> uh, so that was definitely high. Okay, so plans for another flight. 